hate slicing bread because of the struggle, it's not you, it's your knife. We think a serrated knife, also known as a bread knife, is one of the most important blades in your kitchen. It's one of three basic knives we think every home cook should have, along with a chef's knife and a paring knife. A serrated blade can cut into any food that's hard or squishy. The points on the cutting edge bite and sink into food, while the scooped out spaces between them reduce the blade's friction as it moves through. Less friction means easier cutting. That makes them great for splitting tender cake layers or slicing ripe soft tomatoes. And they're perfect for cutting through foods with layers of different textures. Now there are two basic kinds of serrated knives. All purpose serrated knives have blades that extend straight out from the handle. Offset ones have blades that drop down at a 90 degree angle. We reviewed both types, all with stainless steel blades and all between nine and 11 inches long. First and last, we checked their sharpness by slicing tomatoes at the beginning and at the end of testing. Now, not only were more successful knives sharper when they were new, but they stayed that way after lots of use. We sliced big, round sourdough loaves with their thick crusts and their softer interiors. And we sliced hala. We saw which knives helped us make neat, even slices and which didn't. We built tall, loaded BLTs and we quartered the sandwiches. Now that's tricky at the best of times because all the slippery layers just wanna slide around. And that's where a good serrated blade makes a huge difference. We also chopped chocolate, which is maybe an unexpected but great use of a serrated knife because those points bite in and chop more neatly and easily than any other type of blade. And finally, we sliced and portioned our millionaire shortbread with its three layers of different textures. Here's what we learned we liked in a serrated knife. First, you want tall, pointy serrations. They just bite into food better than serrations that are short or ones that are rounded. Those often just skid it over food instead of cutting in. Knives with fewer serrations work better than knives with more serrations. Because when you push down on a serrated knife, the force is divided among the serrations. So the fewer the serrations, the more power each one gets. You want longer, taller blades. First, you just don't want a stumpy little knife. Our top two knives were 10 and 10 and a half inches long. We also liked taller blades with an average height of more than 1.3 inches. Tall blades were just easier to direct and control than shorter blades. And there's another reason you wanna avoid shorter, narrower blades. We found that if they averaged less than one inch tall, they were just too flexible. They just bent and they wobbled and they made messy, uneven slices. We liked moderately long handles with plenty of clearance underneath. Handles made from grippy or textured plastic were much easier to hang onto than ones with slick handles. Now handles that were at least five inches long felt comfortable for even people people with large hands to grip. And that gives us plenty of room for our fingers so our knuckles aren't banging into the cutting board as we cut. Now at the end of all that slicing, we had a winner. Our favorite serrated knife is the Mercer Culinary Millennia 10 inch bread knife. And it has been for many years. That's because it has a long, sharp blade. It has fewer but deeper serrations and that gives it great power and slicing ability. It's got a long grippy handle and it's comfortable for hands of all sizes with lots of clearance underneath, even for larger hands. Best of all, its price is incredibly reasonable. It's such an excellent blade and you can get it for about 20 to $25. I predict you're gonna love this knife as much as we do.